Hello, now I'm going to tell you about human kidney. These specimens you see, they are human kidney, they've been brought up from the calibers, maybe from the same or from different calibers. Um, this specimen will be kept in your vial all those three times for practical purposes or even for spotting and all. So here I'm going to tell you about the general aspects, the general features of the kidneys. So starting with like you know first of all when you pick up a kidney obviously so I mean you will you need to know the definition what it is so you can say that this is a cross compacted structure of a human kidney and which has like various functions but the prime function of the kidney is you know excretory function so it actually eliminates the waste the metabolic waste from the body and the water the excess of water the salts in order to maintain the pH of the blood and there are synonyms used nephros is also for this used for the kidney and rinne the renal word is also used as a synonym for the kidney then about uh, the location right the where actually kidney is placed in the human body so kidneys you know they are pair of excretory organs right and they placed in the in the abdominal cavity resting over the posterior abdominal wall so they are placed adjacent to the lumbar spine adjacent to the upper lumbar spine that is the position of the kidney and you know they are at the upper core of these kidneys they are at the level of the upper wall of t12 and reaching down to the middle some in middle of the l3 wall here so it corresponds to you can say 12th classic l1 l2 and a portion of third lumbar wall here so nearly the length or I mean the height of this kidney is around uh, the height of 3 and a half vertebrae so both the kidneys they are placed adjacent to the upper lumbar spine and the difference between this the two upper portions is nearly about 5 cm and both these kidneys they are actually resting on the muscles of the posterior abdominal wall that is psoas major and quadratus lumborum transversus longus from medial to lateral and they are covered by peritoneum so they both the kidneys they are retroperitoneal structures then about uh, the orientation of the kidneys um first let me tell you about the size the dimension of the kidneys the kidney you are seeing is an average is the the height of the kidney the vertical length of the kidney is around 11 cm that's an average 11 cm and the breadth of the kidney is around 6 cm thickness thickness is about 3 cm so 11 by 6 by 3 cm that's an average size uh, for human kidney and uh, talking about the weight the weight of the kidney uh, in a human adult is about 150 grams a little less in females maybe like 135 grams 135 grams in females about the color of the kidney when you, when you, you know see in life this uh, operation in laparotomy when you find the kidney the color of the kidney is uh, you know brownish reddish brown that's the color of the kidneys then about the orientation of the kidneys like i was to tell you about how the kidneys are placed in the body so you know uh, just i told you the dimensions and all and they close to have placed adjacent to the upper lumbar spine but remember they are not in the same plane both the kidneys they are not in the same same plane the right kidney is a little lower than the left kidney so the left kidney is a little higher placed and the right kidney is a little lower placed now when you see from the anterior view you will find that the kidney actually occupies four different regions of the abdomen 
right so because you know there are two i mean the two planes which actually crosses one is you know the vertical plane that crosses the kidney is the mid clavicular line and the other one is a trans pyloric plane that passes through the kidneys right so when you know and you know that how this anterior abdominal wall they are divided into nine different portions so this being you know because this trans pyloric and mid clavicular line divides you know they divide the kidney here so part of the kidney here upper medial portion reaches into the epigastric fossa and suprolateral portion is sarcophagus in the right hypochondric fossa in the right side and then the lower lateral portion that is the reaches in the lumbar region and the lower medial portion that occupies in the reaches into the umbilical right fossa so that this occupies the four regions on here also this will upper medial portion this will be reaching into the epigastric region upper lateral in the left hypochondrium lower medial in the umbilical region lower lateral in the left iliac fossa so both the kidneys now posteriorly they are actually resting on the muscles that's that's forming the bed of the kidneys medially it will be sos major then laterally it will be quadratus lumborum and even later to that there will be transversus abdominis so that's the bed of the kidneys now about how they are uh, yes so while i was talking about their you know upper and lower you know displacement or rather the uh, alignment uh, is such that the right kidney being a little lower the trans pyloric plane actually trans pyloric plane here passes to the upper portion of this hilum of the right kidney trans pyloric plane passes from here right to the upper portion of the hilum of the right you know it will pass through here why in this left kidney the trans pyloric plane will pass at the level of the lower part of the hilum of the left kidney you got it now so it's like this it's like this right this is how it is placed trans pyloric plane passing to the lower part of the hilum of the left kidney trans pyloric plane passing through the upper part of the hilum of the right kidney got it so this is one thing then they are not actually vertically aligned right they are tilted so that the upper poles are nearer the lower poles are away so being closer the upper poles they are separated by around 5 cm in between the distance between them is 5 cm now another thing is you know that uh, they are not equally closer to the spine right so remember that the left kidney is a little more closer to the spine than the right kidney so this you can remember from the fact that you know the inferior vena cava that lies in the right side of the spine so the left renal vein has to pass anterior to the lumbar spine so that should that shouldn't be under stress being longer in length so to you know decrease the length of this uh, you know left renal vein you can remember that the left kidney is like a little more closer to the median plane one thing got it so about the vertical thing which one is higher which one is lower that i have told you then which one is closer to the median plane is this left one now by the way how to remember that this one is being lower placed because remember this is the big organ that's the liver placed above to this so because of the liver you can remember this right kidney is pushed a little below right and this a little high above and remember while i was teaching you about the lungs right and left lung so right lung remember that was a broader and shorter the right lung was less in height and more in width right and left lung was taller in height and narrower remember there was this pericardium the heart which was encroaching into this right uh, left lung so left lung was narrow and long similarly will be thing here in kidneys remember because of the push of this liver from above this will be displaced a little below one thing and the shape, i mean you know the difference between remember that this one will be a wider and a shorter kidney the right kidney will be wider and shorter same as the case of right lungs 
Now in the left kidney, remember it will be a narrower and a taller kidney. Same as this case, as in case of the left lung. So that was like a bilateral variation. So I have told you about the vertical alignment, the medial tilting, then about the no the transpelvic plane thing that I taught you now about the orientation, right? So as I was telling you that they tilted the upper poles being closer. So remember, there's a longitudinal axis of a kidney, right? So there's a longitudinal axis passing through the two poles. So this vertical, you know, the longitudinal axis is not vertically placed. They are tilted like this, right? So the longitudinal axis of the kidney is directed downwards and laterally because the FS is the upper poles are closer. So the longitudinal axis is directed downwards and laterally for both these kidneys, one thing. Then another thing is the transverse alignment. Transverse alignment is such that you can see there's a transverse axis also, right? First passing the hilum to the lateral borders, so this will be the transverse axis. So the transverse axis is also not horizontal. Transverse axis is also not horizontal. Rather, it's like this. It's not like this, it's like this. So remember the transverse axis of the kidneys that is directed backwards and laterally. Got it? So the transverse axis is placed like this, that it is directed backwards and laterally. What will happen now? The two hyla, the two hylas of the kidneys, they will not be all facing face to face. They will not be completely medially placed. So the hilum of the kidney is directed medially and little forwards. That is the you know face uh, you know direction of the face uh, of hilum of both the kidney is directed medially and a little forward. So that is about the orientation of the kidneys. <clears throat> now about the actually you know uh, that. Uh, orientation if it's asked is actually the anatomical position. Right? Anatomical position is the same thing as how it is aligned. So it's aligned when you talk about this right kidney, you will say that this is placed opposite the T12, L1, L2, L3 vertebral level, and it is tilted like this, such that this longitudinal axis directed downwards and laterally, transverse axis directed backwards and laterally. And so the hilum is facing forward and medially. So that is how it is aligned like this. That's the anatomical position of the kidney. So the right side similarly will be the position of the left side, right? This will be a little closer to the median plane and a little high above. That is uh, all. I mean, you know, the general features. And remember, like during the course of development, the adult human kidney development, you know, with, you know, ontogeny, repeats, phylogeny. So the human embryo continues, like, you know, the development stages right from the anamniotes and the pre, you know, vertebrates. So there's pronephros, mesonephros, metanephros. So the pronephros actually the kidney develops from pronephros in the very early stage of the development. And that actually happens in some uh, cytostools. In fishes. Later on during course of development, the kidney develops from mesonephros. So from mesonephros is anamniotes. That's amniot, anamniot kidneys, they are developed from mesonephros. But in humans, that stage passes through the development. Then finally, the adult human kidney when metanephros and metanephros lies in the pelvis region. So that's how it ascends up. So and you know there is Uretric bud arising from the mesonephric duct. So, metanephros, mesonephric duct, and now that's how this kidney actually develops from the uretric bud and metanephros. So, actually, the kidney during the fetus fetal life is lobulated. So, it's around made up of 12 lobules for the kidneys. So in fetal life, it's lobulated, but in uh, after birth, gradually these lobules of the kidney, the collase, and they become eventually uniform and smooth in adult life. So the kidneys you see is smooth and uniform, but sometimes the evidence of lobulation 
may be may persist you might find some evidence if you find the surface that may not be exactly very smooth and you might some lobulations at some places in kidneys you might from uh, find some lobulations so these lobulations are actually evidence of the kidney being lobulated at the time of development all right so that was about the general features of the kidney